Hi students, today is the introduction to the progressive era and the big essential question, can politics fix social issues? Let's hop in. So if you opened up your slideshow for today, this also has our roadmap. We're going to hit number one, number two, and number three, social gospel, muckrakers, and how the federal government's relationship with business changes and how the government's going to start taking care of people and their welfare. Let's go. So we're going to start this slideshow. You also have your Google Docs to fill in your notes. So my Google Docs are already open, so should yours be. I'm going to start with the social gospel, socialism, and muckrakers. We can also see here's our teaks that we're covering today. Let's hop in. The social gospel movement is led by Protestant ministers and it's called for social reforms. Abolish child labor, unsafe working conditions, and they're against free enterprise, and they want to support temperance to ban alcohol. So I'm in my notes, and I'm just going to put those three there. Ministers, right, against... So they're against child labor, unsafe work, and alcohol. All right, let's jump into socialism. What is socialism? So the government should take over basic industries like water, electricity, and then muckrakers are these journalists who expose corruption, right? They're going to rake up the muck in society. Journalists who expose corruption and socialism is government takes over basic industries. So it could be the mail, water, the electricity. Muckrakers is a big one. Journalists who expose corruption right the bad stuff the muck the muck the dirt all right so we have some of our famous muckrakers here we have jacob reese ida tarbell lincoln steffens frank norris upton sinclair in the purple that's what they covered as a muckraker so if we look in our slides here we have jacob reese he wrote a book how the other half lives he photographed conditions of urban poor. You can actually take this, you can copy it, and you can put it even in for your notes there. Now I know you copied it doing that way, so maybe we'll just write it out. Photos, oh now it's all red, lovely. Let's see this. Photos of the urban poor uh, in his book, right, Ida Tarbell. She, she covers Standard Oil and exposes Rockefeller. Lincoln Stevens, Corruption in Government, right? Covers oil, corruption in government. Uh, let's see Frank Norris. He does railroads, but what? how did he do that? So Frank Norris does a book called The Octopus and these railroad abuses with farmers okay but here's one of the most important ones who we're covering today and we'll read an excerpt we have something called Upton Sinclair's The Jungle so it's a book that describes the unsanitary practices of the meat packing industry so this meat how it's handled how is it shipped? Is there stuff in it? Is it good to eat? Is it bad? Right? So he covers the unsanitary meat packing industry. All right, in his book called The Jungle. So here's the jungle. We have stop directions. Read the excerpt below. Answer the question. So we have the jungle. This book portrayed the new industrial economy as inhumane, destructive, and uncaring. One scene in the book described piles of rat-infested, rotting meat being used to make sausages. 
gross. Take your time, read through the passage, and answer the question. Pause the video at this time. Go and read it. How might a reader in 1906 have reacted to this passage? After reading it, a reader in 1906 would have felt, I'm going to let you fill this in, would have reconsidered, right? will no longer buy. All right, so those are sentence stems. You finish the sentence. So we go social reformers. We have Jane Addams with the Whole House, Anti-Defamation League, and Ida B. Wells. So I'm going to hit present back on my slides. Let's go through it. So Jane Addams does a settlement house for immigrants. She provides child care and nursing services. The Anti-Defamation League is a Jewish organization. They oppose religious prejudice. So people who are hating on Jews, they oppose it. And Ida B. Wells is the National Anti-Lynching uh, Crusade founder. And we'll go over what lynching looks like. So Jane Addams right, establishes a home for immigrants to help them speak English and get jobs. Anti-Defamation League is against religious prejudice. So anyone who is anti -H And Ida B. Wells is the big one. So lynching, as you can see there, there's a picture on the right that shows a man of color who's hung by a rope and he has a noose by a mob. Ida B. Wells establishes the National Anti-Lynching Crusade and fights against injustice. So that's wrong. A lot of mobs in the South would take a man of color, or a woman of color, and hang them rather than letting the law do its job. So we have those three are done. We have two more. We have W.B. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington. So Webb Du Bois is going to be the founder of the NAACP. This is the National, sorry, National Association of Advancement of Colored People. He demanded immediate equality. Booker T. Washington's also a leader, but he supported gradual equality. So they have two different views on how people of color will gain equality. So, big one here, founder of the NAACP. Type this out, National Association of the Advancement of Colored People. They are a group. They fund um, litigation. Uh, they fund anything that promotes equality. So, he promotes equality now, Booker T. Washington is also an African rights leader, African-American, my apologies, who supports gradual equality. Let's first create skills for people of color, and with those skills and jobs, then we'll demand. All right, so we have some political reforms. So we're done with social, the secret ballot, initiative, referendum, recall. Knock these out. We have a short reading, and then we're done. So let's knock out secret ballot. What is that? What does it look like, right? So the secret ballot is a voting, a voting booth. You walk into, you can cast your ballot. No one pressures you, right? 
So voters are less subject to pressure or intimidation, right? So voters cast secret. They are not uh, pressured to vote a certain way. All right, these three we're going to do together. The IRR, Initiative, Referendum, Recall. Initiative, anyone can, I'm going to go and do this, directly introduce a bill, right? Referendum is where you can compel, sorry, I'm trying to get this, compel legislators to put bills on the ballot. So here we go. So anyone can propose a bill, referendum, compel legislators, those are lawmakers, to put a bill on the ballot to vote. And recall, we can recall anybody we vote for. So if we vote for someone and they do a bad job, we can remove them. So we can remove elected officials, all right? So we can actually vote to remove elected officials. This didn't exist in the past. In the progressive era, it does. And last but not least, direct party primary. So we can elect the candidate who's going to run for president. And then direct election of senators. So can elect the presidential candidate. So this is how Joe Biden is where he is, how President Trump is having to go against him. So 17th Amendment gave us the direct election of senators. That's good. They are not just given that job. Instead, we can vote for them. It's really good. All right, last but not least is the biggest shift in politics in the progressive era. It's the Pendleton Civil Service Act. Here it is. Americans are going to have opportunities to get a federal job based on merit and not political affiliation. So employees were selected through competitive exams the act made it unlawful to fire you based on political reasons. All right, so employment for federal jobs were given based on merit and competitive exams rather than political affiliation. So you do not get this job because you voted for President Trump. You instead get this job because you're the best one for it. That's what this exam does. So directions. Read the excerpt below. Answer the question. So Teddy Roosevelt is serving and he's not the president yet, but he has a quote. That government jobs belong to the American people, not politicians. A politician who asks a job seeker, seeker for his political favor. Who did you vote for in the last election? That way I can pay you either a lot of money or a little bit of money. So why did Roosevelt feel it was inappropriate to ask? If you were to ask a job seeker, who, who, who did you vote for? Should I hire you? Why do you think that's wrong, right? If you were to apply for a job and I wanted to know what your political views were, but really you can't do the job that well, what's wrong with that? So go ahead, take your time, do the best you can to answer these questions and complete your notes. We'll have a quiz to follow up with this. Please message me with anything else you have. Don't forget, I'm out of class today. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Have a good one.